In this video, I show you the MR anatomy of the posterolateral corner and how you can easily identify the important structures. I used to have quite some trouble when assessing the posterolateral corner and basically I was always looking for this arcuate ligament and it's really confusing and it's so annoying. I hate the arcuate ligament. Please comment below if you have the same issue. It's, it's really a stupid structure because over the course of the years or decades, different authors described this arcuate ligament and basically everybody meant a different structure and they are all so close together. You have all these little tiny structures. It's really confusing. I had an epiphany in 2016 at the SSR meeting in New Orleans. There was this experienced radiologist who does a lot of sports imaging. He basically only cares for three structures and these three structures only. He cares for the lateral collateral ligament, he cares for the popliteus tendon and also for the biceps femoris tendon and that's it. Obviously I'm not going to only show you these three structures. We are also having a look at the popliteofibular ligament, the fibular ligament, the meniscal popliteal fascicles and what is currently believed to be the arcuate ligament. So if anybody asks you where is the arcuate ligament, you can at least point to one specific structure. Now I'm going to show you all these different structures one by one. The most important structure is the lateral collateral ligament, which you can see here. It's this black ligament, thick ligament running down from the femoral condyle down to the lateral aspect of the fibular head. You can also identify it here on your transverse or axial sections running down as these thick structures inserting onto the lateral aspect of the fibular head. Sometimes it's joining the biceps femoris tendon and they are inserting here together in, as a conjoint tendon. Then the next structure is the popliteus tendon. It is also easily identifiable here. It's originating here from this notch and then running down here through the popliteal hiatus into the muscle here with the musculotendinous junction at this level. This is the popliteus tendon. This is the origin. It's running down here through the popliteal hiatus and then here into the muscle. The next structure you can assess is the popliteofibular ligament. Now it is a structure that is not always visible. Now let me zoom in so you can see it. First you can find it by identifying the popliteus tendon. It's originating here running down this course and then into the muscle here. That's the popliteus tendon. Now as the name suggests the popliteofibular ligament connects the popliteal tendon with the fibular head. So you're looking for a ligament like structure that is running from the popliteus tendon down to the fibula. And it's actually this structure here. So you can see in some cases it's easy to see it's quite a thick ligament and biomechanically it seems to be also important. But it's not always visible depending on how you plan your uh, coronal view or your sections. It's sometimes running through different planes or you suffer from partial volume artifacts. So if you don't see it, it's not so bad. It's, it's not a problem. It's, as I said in the introduction, it's not one of the three super important um, uh, structures anyways. This is the popliteofibular ligament. You can also see the popliteofibular ligament on your axials here. This is the popliteus tendon and it is this band-like structure or this ligament here. If you cross-reference it, you can see that it's just matching the popliteofibular ligament as I have shown you on your coronal sections here. The next structure is the biceps femoris tendon and it's this tendon running down here also inserting onto the lateral aspect of the fibular head. It is sometimes, as I have already mentioned, joining the lateral collateral ligament and they are inserting together as one structure. Also on your axials you can see the biceps femoris tendon here running down in close proximity to the lateral collateral ligament which is here and they are both inserting here in this region. Anatomically the biceps femoris tendon has different portions which are not easily identifiable on MR imaging anyway so I don't go into too much detail here at this moment. 
The next structure that you can assess are the meniscopopliteal fascicles and they are basically two main fascicles that are connecting the lateral meniscus with either the joint capsule or the other surrounding structures. You have the supraposterior meniscopopliteal fascicle and the anteroinferior meniscopopliteal fascicle. So this one is the anteroinferior meniscopopliteal fascicle and this one here better seen here is the supraposterior meniscopopliteal fascicle. They are building like a hole or a hiatus where the popliteus tendon is running through. If you have lesions or ruptures here, it is sometimes associated with a meniscus lesion on the lateral posterior horn here. It's not the case here because it's normal. The next structure is the arcuate ligament, my favorite ligament in the whole human body. And so in the radiographics paper that I put the link down in the description, they use the lateral inferior genicular vessels as a landmark to identify the arcuate ligament. They even uh, uh, separate the arcuate ligament into two different uh, portions that are not always present or not to the same extent anyways. They use the lateral inferior genicular vessels shown here as a landmark and immediately anterior to these vessels here, this is basically still the joint capsule, as you can appreciate if you're coming from, from more medially. It's a joint capsule, but they say that this is the arcuate ligament here. You can also see this on your axials. Here you have the origin of the popliteus tendon, and a little bit lower, or more or less at this level, you have the joint capsule here. And the arrows they show in the paper are always showing here at this portion of the joint capsule, which might be a little bit thickened, and they refer to this as the arcuate ligament. Immediately anteriorly to these vessels here is supposed to be the arcuate ligament. So if you will, you can name this the arcuate ligament, but in fact it's probably just a thickened joint capsule here, and whether it's a true ligament or not, <coughs> it's still debated, and it's not important probably anyways. Now let's have a look at the different patient here. We go to the lateral side of the knee, this is the popliteus tendon and we have the lateral inferior genicular vessels here and anteriorly to these vessels is supposed to be the arcuate ligament. Now if you look carefully we have a fabella in this case and there is even the fabellofibular ligament which is supposed to be running from the fabella down to the fibula but as mentioned in that paper it's supposed to run behind these vessels so it's not the case here so I'm not sure if this is now a fibular ligament or actually an arcuate ligament. So as you can see it's quite confusing and not always clear so I wouldn't bother too much. Let me give you another example here in this patient. Again we have the posterior joint capsule we have the fascicles, which are looking nice, the meniscopopliteal fascicles, the popliteus tendon is normal. And now we are looking for the lateral inferior genicular vessels here. And anteriorly should be the arcuate ligament. I mean, there is no clear structure running down here. Is it normal? Is it torn? Really, it's, it's so confusing and so stupid. So most likely it's intact because we don't have any other soft tissue abnormalities here in this corner anyways. Let me show you a different example here. Again, we are in the lateral compartment, we have the popliteus tendon, the meniscus, we have the different fascicles, which are very tiny in this case, and then we have the joint capsule here, and supposedly a arcuate ligament here. running down. Posterior lateral corner injuries are commonly associated with anterior cruciate ligament tears or posterior cruciate ligament tears. They can occur by themselves, but it's very uncommon. The standard for posterior lateral instability is still the clinical examination. However, it can be challenging due to pain and swelling. Therefore, we want to use MRI and MR imaging to raise the suspicion of a posterior lateral corner injury. If a significant posterior lateral corner injury is untreated, it may lead to poor outcome, ACL graft failure and eventually chronic instability. Let me briefly show you this study by Dr. Lucas Fili, one of my colleagues at Paul Christ University Hospital. It's a really nice study. What they try to do is 
take all the structures that I have just shown you and try to find out which injury to which structure would best predict a posterior lateral corner instability in patients with ACL tears, since it's most commonly associated with ACL or PCL tears. And it's really nice. Their conclusion was that complete tears or avulsions of the lateral collateral ligament was the most significant MRI predictor of posterior lateral instability. And for one reader, biceps femoris tendon tears were also a good predictor. The smaller structures like the popliteofibular ligament and the fibellofibular ligament and the popliteomeniscal fasticles did not improve the diagnostic performance of MRI in the prediction of posterolateral instability. So the next time you have a knee MRI and you want to assess the posterolateral corner, just check the lateral collateral ligament, the popliteus tendon and the biceps femoris tendon. Don't spend too much time on the smaller structures as it will not improve your diagnosis in the end. If you have any questions left regarding the posterior lateral corner, please comment below and I will answer any of your queries. Also, if you learned something today and liked the video, please hit that like button and also make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That's it for today and thanks for watching.